welcome back to the tech shack to another low quality video we are on my other work bench right now so please excuse the air conditioner noise we are right next to the air conditioner but um if you saw one of my last videos where we did the, the flooring in here for whatever reason when we moved this server cabinet back or the server um shelving whatever back what used to sit down here was my little itx um, Dell Optiplex. It was an ITX size Dell Optiplex with a um, 6th gen i5 that ran OpenSense and was our router. For whatever reason, as soon as I put this back and hit power, there was no sign of power at all. I don't know if it was a motherboard or the power supply, but it was a Dell Optiplex, so it was all proprietary. And then I had this guy kicking around, and actually at the end of that video, I thought I was just going to replace it with like one of those AliExpress mini PCs because by the time I bought a motherboard that supported 6th or 7th gen Intel CPUs which I have a bunch of lying around um, it would have cost me more than a mini PC but I have a ton of 2nd and 3rd gen i5 that's where I came across this so this ITX motherboard is $30 or actually under $30 I think it was like $26 and change and it supports 2nd and 3rd gen Intel processors and I have a whole bunch of those I mean the one I'm currently using right now this Optiplex is a third gen it's doing excellent job third gen i5 but it's big for what it is and I want something that fits right here in this case is old but it's been sitting here a while empty and I might as well make use of it so this guy like I said was only $26 and change and then this is the motherboard the box got kind of beat up in shipping now i was gonna order a better cooler and a different networking card to add in for my second nick and i was gonna go nvme and a few other things i wanted to order for it because the board wasn't supposed to be here for a while but showed up really early i mean maybe this cooler will be good enough for it to be a router and i won't need to order those parts but what I will say on first glance is this motherboard, this PCB seems to be like pretty bare. Like not a lot of components on it. For an ITX motherboard, it's usually pretty like compact. There's usually not much dead space at all because they're trying to fit a lot of things in a small area. But again, this is the cheapest new quote unquote motherboard on AliExpress. The, the motherboard obviously is new but that chipset salvaged from another board and it is supposedly a B75 which I don't doubt because that's just low-end consumer chipset from a decade and a half ago almost. Alright but let's get this guy together and see if it works. So this motherboard is about as basic as you can get. We paired it with an Overkill i5 2500K and 16 gigs of DDR3. At 1600 mega, whatever you want to call it nowadays, transfer speed. For rear I.O. you have four USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, HDMI, VGA, and standard audio. USB 3 was not standard when this chipset was new, so this is some Chinese hackery which is not a bad thing. It only has a single CPU fan and single case fan header, but only three pins, so it lacks PWM. For expansion, they have hacked an NVMe support as well for a single M.2 slot. It has four SATA ports, a single USB 3 and a single USB 2 header, and a PCI Express by 16 slot. It has the most basic BIOS of any Chinese motherboard we have used. It lacks most virtualization support, and very little in the way of CPU tuning, but at the end of the day, it functions as it should. We dropped the OpenSense boot SSD in, and it booted up fine. Two full versions out of date and had a bunch of updating and upgrading to do, but it all went extremely smooth. The larger Opplex is gone, the smaller ITX system is put together and running better than expected. The stock cooler is running fine, and it has been stable for a few days now. Now, as for who this board is for, this question is why I am narrating it. Jordo had originally planned this as a same-day video, but as we thought about more uses for it, the original conclusion changed. So we kept the intro, but threw out most of his narration, and I redid the voiceover. 
This ITX board is as basic as you can get, but it works fine. You are not going to overclock this K-series CPU with it. But if you have a mission-critical system that needs a replacement board, this ITX board will slot in any ITX, ATX, or micro ATX case, allowing you to resurrect or repair an existing system for 26 bucks. You can also build a budget NAS or internet appliance with one of these. Yes, there are newer, more power-efficient options, but they are either more expensive or come with other caveats. For ten more dollars, you can get a used i5 and a stock cooler and have a CPU combo for under 40 bucks. With the NVMe slot and four SATA ports, you can drop this in a four-bay case, and you have a decent little budget server. The Buy 16 PCI Express slot will allow you to expand the storage, add faster networking or add a GPU for AI, Plex transcoding or other GPU compute tasks. The only thing in that price range is something like this AMD APU board. While the AMD board has amazing power usage, it lacks any real horsepower, and even the later FM1 CPUs have lackluster firewall and routing performance. Going to a newer socketed platform has a huge premium with ITX, and then you have the rest of the platform costs as well. On the Intel embedded side, the N100 and later CPUs have been powerhouses, especially compared to power consumption. They have been amazing little home lab CPUs. However, its NAS ITX board with those CPUs cost more than a complete mini PC with the same CPU, and you start getting into the same price as desktop Intel or AMD combos. Older Intel embedded systems are great at routing. They destroy AMD embedded solutions of the same era with router and firewall tasks, but their consumer embedded ITX and MATX boards only have a Buy 1 PCI Express slot. Even if it has a Buy 16 slot by length, it's only Buy 1 electrically, as those CPUs have four lanes or less. So for add-in GPUs, HBA, and network cards, that's a major limitation. For us, the board was a great fit. Depending on budget and use case, this might be all you need, or what you need to get started, especially if you already have a pile of second and third gen CPUs lying around. All right, so it's been a few days. The Optiplex is gone. The motherboard was a lot better than I expected. And while initially I couldn't think of any use cases for it, I've actually decided I'm probably going to order another one. All right, and that brings me to the Optiplex that that mini ITX machine replaced. Originally, before our um, OpenSense box died, our previous one, this guy was going to go in the house with the 12 terabyte external plug back into it and meant kind of an offsite sync thing back up for the tech shack. But that external is USB 3. This guy doesn't have native USB 3 being third gen. That motherboard had it added in with Chinese hackery. So I could either add in this card and to give it USB 3 and then keep the last Optiplex going in my home lab or you could order another one of those motherboards with a you know $40 case be less than 70 bucks in and have a new machine or a new to me machine use the CPU and RAM from this guy but rid myself of the proprietary Optiplex form factor and have something that I could actually upgrade, potentially throw a graphics card in and more storage and move all the Plex transcoding and all the Plex work off the Tech Shack server and onto a separate one in the house. And yes, I know these older CPUs are not very power efficient, all right? But if you're worried about power efficiency, worry twice as much for both of us because I'm not worried. But that's it for this low quality video. I'll see you guys in the next one.